Let's bring in former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you very much for joining us. First, if you uh, could just comment on this, um, a tragic, tragic consequence of all of this, that videographer who we can now confirm was killed. Yeah, first of all, some serious and sobering reporting from your your folks over there, um, really writing those first pages of history, as your reporter said, and tragic that uh, that the Reuters uh, crew was killed and, and, and injured. But, uh, you know, it shows you the bravery on, on all sides here in terms of uh, the, the military, Israeli military, and Western reporters trying to cover this conflict, this terrorism being inflicted by the Israeli people, uh, by Hamas, and, and hopefully not by Hezbollah as well. But uh, that's one of the things we're watching out for. Mr. Secretary, if I could, and I know Brett's going to jump in here as well, um, if I could take you to the screen here, um, to, if you could shed some more light on the evacuations that are happening right now uh, with a, almost a million people uh, told um, by the IDF to evacuate uh, nor the northern Gaza Strip down to the south. Are you talking about more than a million people? Civilians are being told to get, get out. The IDF is not confirming that this ground invasion is happening, although this is certainly sending a strong signal that this could be coming in the coming hours or days, Mr. Secretary. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's 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 not news. We 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 know that there was going to be an incursion by the Israeli military. They said the siege is on. Uh, President uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said that a, a few days ago. I think uh, you know the IDF giving a warning to the Gazan civilians to move south is is a smart thing to do. And uh, soon enough they'll move in. I think the unknowns though are you, you know what is the outcome, the end state that. Uh, Israel hopes to achieve. Uh, we, we don't believe it's going to be a reoccupation of Gaza. They gave that up in 2005 for, for reasons that were shared across the political spectrum. Uh, but what will it be? Will it be simply to uh, knock out the Hamas leadership and make sure they have no longer any war fighting potential and to uh, destroy all the underground tunnels? That's We don't know that. And then secondly, of course, it's complicated by two things at least. One is the status of the hostages being held in Gaza, anywhere from 130 to 150. And Will Hamas uh, uh, be true to its pledge to start executing uh, hostages, as horrible as that may be? And then the second unknown, as uh, your reporters mentioned, is will Hezbollah open up a front to the north? I, I, I would think I, uh, uh, that Israel does not want a second front in the north while it takes on Gaza. I think that's why the United States moved the carrier strike group up there as a reason to deter them, Iran, Syria, and others. We know that other capitals are sending similar messages. Uh, so we don't know whether this is a strategic decision right now by the Hezbollah to stand back or whether it's an operational move, some patience. Maybe they want to see the IDF get um, fully ensconced into Gaza before they uh, unleash whatever they have planned. So this is going to play out over the coming days and weeks, and um, and it's it's just the beginning. Mr. Secretary, it's Brett Baer. Um, thanks for joining us. You know, I, I want to ask you about the reluctance of the administration to talk about Iran's direct involvement. Let's put aside the funding and the back and forth about what Iran's doing with the money and whether Biden administration, you know, easing up sanctions, which it's clear can be proven uh, to, for Iran to sell oil, is giving them a lot of money to use. But the New York Times today, says this, Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, held an hours-long online meeting in March with an elite group of strategists from the all Iran-backed militias, from all of the Iran-backed militias, and told them to get ready for a war with Israel with a scope and reach, including a ground invasion that would mark a new era. This is according to two participants from Iran and Syria. You add that to the reporting of the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post of a direct impact in planning this particular attack. I'm just wondering why you think that there is this reluctance by the Biden administration to talk about that, to confirm that intelligence has any scope of that, and what you think is behind that? You know, Brett, it is puzzling that we had this uh, report come out from the Wall Street Journal on Sunday evening, last Sunday evening, saying that, uh, you know, uh, the IRGC plotted with Hezbollah and Hamas on the plans and that Tehran greenlighted it. And then we had this kind of conflicting, unconfirmed reporting coming from the administration that uh, they can't ascertain that yet. Now, maybe they will. Who, who knows? But I know this much. And I said this, by the way, the morning that we all woke up last Saturday uh, to these uh, atrocious attacks by the terrorists into, into, uh, into uh, Israel, and we would later learn about the atrocities committed. I said then that all roads lead back to Iran. 
uh, the funding, the training, the, the, the support, uh, all of that, eventually, whether it's Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis in Yemen, the Shia militia groups in Iraq, you name it, goes back to Iran. And at the end of the day, you, you know, I, I hope Israel is successful in decimating uh, Hamas, but that's still not going to solve the problem. You have to go back to the source, and the source is Iran. And they've been causing this malign behavior, terrorism throughout the region, and certainly against Israel for four plus decades now. That's where we need to be focused on eventually. Mr. Secretary, thank you so much for joining us on all of that.